thanks. This is my second video. So there's two more to go before I get the bike running. Here I am. Now you're going to be seeing me getting uh, parts ready for painting. Again, thanks to my brother-in-law letting me use uh, his sand blaster at his work. And uh, there you see the fenders, rust inside on the inner part. So getting those ready to take to his place. Crash bar. So I sandblasted everything that needed to be sandblasted. And uh, did all the repairs, everything before painting. And there you'll see a bunch of parts. I just finished washing uh, them, getting them ready for priming. Uh, the beautiful Springer cylinder cylinders. There's the exhaust. Really happy. No damage to those. That beautiful muffler. And uh, gonna paint that with high. Look at the. Uh, brazing on that beautiful Springer taking some selfies now now this was in the summer of uh, 2018 tranny mounting plate toolbox just getting everything ready for painting You know, you scrape a lot of the paint off, you find a lot of damage that needs to be welded and straightened, whatever. So that was the, uh, the plan. Cleaning everything up. Handlebars, happy, no damage with those. Everything going good. Now here you'll see me doing the repair on the rear fender, how to cut that piece out, welding a new piece, sandblasting there, then a bit of body work and primer and so forth. So you'll see that. How to put in some good gauge steel there. There I'm welding in that plate, grinding it down. You know, I don't like body work at all. I'm not good at it. I get nervous. It's like a real, got to be an artist to do body work, but you got to do what you got to do. And I wanted to keep the uh, paint that was on the bike. There's a lot of patina on it. Give it that, you know, I don't want the thing looking brand new. So I wanted to keep some of the patina on it. So I only fixed what needed to be fixed there's the original paint code and uh, color of the paint if anybody wants to copy that down testing the paint and starting to spray her down I was going to get a friend to help me with this, but he lives quite a ways away. And uh, I thought, ah, oh, it was a beautiful day. I'm going to do it. So off I did. Came out really good. Of course, this is two-stage paint. You got to put the clear on it when, when it's uh, ready. I let it dry about, I think it was about 25, 30 minutes between coats. It came out really good. There, I put the clear on. You see that? The clear on the back, wherever it needed it. Put a, I probably put about six coats of clear on. Want it super durable. Now I'm getting ready for the primer. You'll see me hanging up the parts. It's good to have a backyard and a clothesline. And I also ran some string, put the parts, hang up all the parts. Boy, there's seemed to be like hundreds of parts that needed to be done. And like it says, this was done in July, 2018. Hanging up parts on ropes and on the clothesline. 
cleaning, dusting everything off, tack rag, making sure everything's good. There's some brazen I had to do to fix that primary cover. Just wanted to clean that up. There I'm starting to prime. Those were all sandblasted the inside of the fenders and now I'm priming. And you'll see me just priming all the parts. I think I used uh, two, two and a half quarts of primer. I was surprised how much primer. I guess because of all the different parts. And I put at least two coats of primer on everything. Oh, another shot of the fenders. The Springer bars. Uh, doing the the rims. Yeah, all these parts were sandblasted and make sure everything was good. Now I'm doing the jet black. Use three cans, at least two coats. The jet black. No candy apple on this old school bike. Thank my wife for taking all the pictures while I'm working here. Had to pick a day where it was the right temperature and also wasn't windy. It came out good though. A lot of spray painting. How to fix those floorboards. All original stuff though. I'm really happy. Just can't uh, believe how good the quality was back in the good old days. Can almost tell the quality just by the weight. Everything's so heavy. Those brake drums, beautiful original brake drums, rolled over edges on them. Nice and heavy. Doing the toolbox there. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember having to move the rims off the clothesline and move them over there. Give those another coat. I think I did three coats of paint on the uh, rims. Anything that you know is going to be come in contact with wear and stuff. I did a lot of coats on them. All the brackets, all the little pieces. <laughs> You'll see after I do the clear, I hung up the parts to dry in the main floor of the house under renovations <laughs> but uh, finishing up there with the uh, paint now I'm moving on to the clear coat and there I again over two cans of clear coat on all these parts so it was a lot Yeah, everything coming out good and then cooperating. No runs, no drips, everything came out nice. There's the exhaust. I really love that exhaust. I use super uh, quality high heat ceramic spray paint for the exhaust. And there, as I told you, there's all of the, you see the whole line of parts lined up, put a string and hung up so many parts inside the house. Now I'm working on the dash, original skull dash. Really happy, everything all original, good quality. 
I numbered the wiring as I took it apart, took pictures. It's not original wiring, of course, but it is the um, good quality uh, reproduction with the cloth on the outside of the wire. And cleaning everything up, making sure everything's working perfect. I also uh, was so happy when I stripped the paint off the dash and that it was copper coated. Oh, I was so happy with that. I, I like that look. Real industrial old school look. I clear coated it. I wasn't going to paint that black again. And there's me clear coating. And I really like the look of it, of course. Rather than just black. Clear coated the little lens uh, holders, put it all together. So that, that's the uh, the look I wanted. Same thing when I stripped the uh, horn uh, cover, it was solid brass. So I clear coated that. There it is, there generator light, oil light. Now I'm working on the uh, frame. This thing took me a lot of time to get this thing all prepared. I stripped this all by hand. I didn't want to sandblast the frame. Plus I had no way of sandblasting it, but I, I uh, used my uh, pressure washer. You'll see that. Uh, and that, the paint that was on there, I don't know who painted it, but the pressure washer blew off most of all the paint. You'll see that and just left the primer. Then I used a electric drill with a wire brush on it. Took most of it off and sanded it by hand. Cleaned it all up. But uh, came out great. You'll see that. Quite a few pictures of the frame. So impressed with the uh, workmanship back then. I think of 81 years ago. There's the little hallmark and the number two telling you it's a 37 to 38 frame. It's also on the rear where the axle goes through. You'll see that. Now here I'm at the pressure washing stage. Cleaning the thing up. And... Uh, Nice warm day because I was drenched. Did this out in the driveway. <laughs> Came out good though. I say I spent a full three or three hours. I mean uh, three days solid. Wire brushing the uh, frame and sanding it by hand to get it ready for paint. Look at that, just the primer left. Now it's uh, in the backyard again. Now you're starting to see the hallmark much clearer. You look close there and you'll see the hallmark in the number two in the back. There's a little closer shot of it. And uh, casting. But the workmanship and all brazing, undamaged frame. It's just beautiful. Now, I didn't clean any. I wanted to keep all that original braze. I didn't clean any of that up and smooth it out. Now, there you go. The underside of the castings. All original. There, me washing it down. Look at all that. 81-year-old brazing. Just Beautiful. Now I've got it hung up and it's its turn for the painting. Getting it ready. And uh, away I go.
you're probably wondering, what is this guy painting it with? Well, I did a lot of research and uh, I decided to paint it with, uh, there you go, KBS, the rust seal. And then I put the black top on. I don't re recommend this product though. Boy, you got to have the perfect environment to use this product. I know it's a good product, but you got to be in a laboratory under perfect environmental conditions. If it's too hot or too humid, it dries too quickly on the outside, and then the solvent on the inside bubbles out. So it really gave me a hard time. What should have taken a couple of hours? I spent, I think, two to three days painting it, but it did come out perfect when I finally was finished. And here it is back in uh, my little workshop, put in a new seat post bushing, starting to put the thing back together now. Now the original foot clutch, you'll see me taking it all apart and uh, putting it back together. Super quality, really impressed with uh, this thing how they used to make stuff in the good old days. So we're wrapping up this video. This is number two. I hope you'll watch my next one, number three, and then the fourth one. Next one is uh, the horn, the springer, the wheels, and the tranny. Thanks. We'll see you on the next one.